Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and in this video, I'm going to show you Reason 11 as a rack device inside Cubase. So this would apply to other DAWs as well. Not all of them are supported just yet, but they will be soon, I'm told. So Reason as a rack device. Now, why am I excited about that? I'm a Cubase guy, I'm a machine guy, but I use a lot of other software as well, and Reason is a program that I grew up on. I used to actually demo Reason, early versions of Reason, in the uh, Vancouver area here in Canada. And I had great times going off and showing people how the software worked because it was so powerful compared to what was available at the time. And so I really loved the software. But as the years went on, other virtual instruments became more powerful and I found myself sticking to Cubase exclusively for my DAW, and Reason started collecting dust on my virtual computer shelf, if you know what I mean. So I would update it every time, but I just find myself not using it. I found Rewire to be kind of clunky. Now what's so exciting is I can just throw in any virtual instrument from Reason inside Cubase as a separate device, just like any other virtual instrument. So it starts to look kind of like Halion or Contact, where you have these different libraries and you have all your patches within there. So that's really where they're headed with this sort of functionality of Reason. But there's some caveats that come with that. So there's some things that don't work the same way we're used to working with them in Reason. I'll show you what those are today. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what Reason as a rack device can be and whether it's right for you. I've got this project which is all Reason tracks inside Cubase. So here we can see the Reason Rack plugin. And over on the left, we've got the browser. So that's collapsed just with this little button right here. And first off, you can see that I've got this kind of blue color. It actually matches my color of Cubase quite well. I'll show you what the other colors look like. The default one is this white right here. So that's what it would look like when you first load it up. And then here is the blue. And then this one is the dark version. So to get those, you just click the settings button right here and go and choose your theme. So looking back at this Reason Rack plugin, uh, you can see there's a few things that look just like Reason. We don't have a mixer at the top, but of course you could have a bunch of devices and have them all go into a mixer if you wanted. So I could go over to this device right here and I could pull up a mixer. Let's grab, you know, let's grab the old basic mixer. And if I turn the rack around, the tab button doesn't work anymore, by the way. So I flip the rack around and I can have this audio go out into one and two. I could have another device at the same time, put that into number two, and then have all of these go into my IO device here in Cubase. So let me undo this and we've got a nice button here for undoing things. There are some things that don't work in the browser like we expect them to. So if I click on this little button right here, the, the, the folder button or the browse patch button, you see that I go over to my different kits over on the left just like we'd normally do. And if I click on a new patch right here, double click on it, it'll load that patch. But unfortunately, the arrow keys up and down don't work in the browser. Hopefully they change that because I love browsing patches just with the arrow key and it does work that way in Reason standalone. Once you have favorites, you can add favorites. So of course we can use all the devices in Reason. We can use our rack extensions and things like that. We can also use any of the effects to process any audio within your DAW. The coolest thing about Reason is how modular it is and how you can have one effect going into another, going into another. And then of course with those creations, you can save them as presets, as combinators. You can save multiple instruments that you've got with a whole bunch of effects. You can save those as a combinator patch and then just call them up whenever you want. So there's a ton of sound design capabilities in Reason that I think a lot of people who've never explored the program would probably have no idea about. So this first track right here is a drum track. And if I click the toaster button there, we can see the, the drum patch that I've got. So I've got machine right now hooked up and it's running just in controller mode. So it's controlling Kong. And I love that. I love playing on machine and I love being able to control Kong with machine as opposed to the keyboard. 
uh, just feels so much better with the pads. Now the cool thing about using the drum kit here in Cubase is I can use the drum editor. So now that I'm in here, I can go in and I can click on each one separately, control velocities of each each instrument separately. So I've gone through and I've edited my drums. I've got a bass as well. And with this one, I've got a synth bass and a slap bass. And this one is a virtual instrument that I was most excited about was this new Scenic virtual instrument. And it does look familiar. It looks a little bit like some other virtual instruments out there. We've got two different patches that we can morph between with this little balance thing. So let's click the edit button right here and then I can see the different sounds that they've got loaded into these two sides, A and B. So we can see engine A, engine B, and then we can see effects for each of them, and then we can see master effects for the entire thing. So there's some deep stuff that we can get into here as far as this little virtual instrument goes. This is the newest one that comes with Reason 11, and uh, I'm gonna get out of edit mode and just show you what that one sounds like. So it's a cool virtual instrument, and I am using this one on this patch right here. I like the sound of this patch. I was kind of inspired right away with it. And you've got these other controls in here. So let's just go load up another Scenic and then just have a quick look through some of the patches. So I'm gonna to go to Reason Rack Plugin and there's my Reason Rack Plugin. I'll go to Scenic and then I'll go to the browser and right away you'll notice the browser is assigned to that virtual instrument which is really nice. You don't have to go looking for the patches just for Scenic. Double click to load a patch. <laughs> Scenic has these macros as well that they've built in and that's under the master effects. So if you see these three different controls right here and you click the edit button, as long as you're on the master effects, you'll see what those are assigned to. I haven't figured out a way to control these with MIDI. So I'm guessing if you are in Reason, there's ways for you to automate this, this kind of stuff, but I cannot figure out how to automate this with Reason as a rack device. So that might be one of the downsides here. But the patches themselves are pretty cool, but there isn't a ton of them. So if I go look over at the some of the patches, we've got some drones, there's a handful of drones, we'll double click on that. It's a nice patch. We've got some others, there's some experimental ones which are pretty weird, and then we've got some percussive ones. Double click on the good vibes. Only about a hundred and some odd patches in here. Not a ton. Another one that I was quite excited about was Complex One, this modular synthesizer. And I'm not a modular synthesis kind of guy, but I think this would be maybe a good place to learn a little bit more about modular synthesis. And of course you can show the cables and see the routing of each patch. So I've got a couple patches of those in there. And then I've also got one other really sweet patch in here which is also a scenic, and that is this gentle bassoon. thing I've got going on is some effects. So I've actually gone, just went and made myself a send effect. So if I go project effect, I can add a reason effect, plugin effect. I can call it, let's call it um, delay. We'll go to a delay effect, the echo. So now I can use that warm echo as a regular old send effect for any of my tracks. It really opens up an entire world of effects as well to us with reason. So I go over to my sends and there I can see the delay that I just made and then I can turn it up. 
So you can use effects. There's a ton of effects. I should probably make videos that start showing you some of these devices and some of these effects that you can use within Cubase. For those of you who are buying Reason for the first time, I think that's something that they're trying to do is get a lot of people to come over and say, hey, buy Reason as a suite of virtual instruments and effects that you can use within your favorite DAW. There are a few things I should mention that you can't do with Reason as a rack device. And one of them is working with Rex files. But the problem with using Reason as a Rack plugin is you can't copy this loop to track. It says cannot copy loops to track. It's only possible when you run Reason as a standalone program. And so I'm hoping that they have some functionality coming up where you can just drag and drop the loop and it will drop a MIDI file that is corresponding to each of those slices on your Dr. Rex. The other thing you can do with the Dr. Rex, other than playing it chromatically, is control it via MIDI. And so I've got eight different loops that I can have loaded up in here. And you can control each of them through these MIDI keys. So the E down here controls loop one, tells it to start. This one, F controls loop two, and so on. So I can switch between the different loops. I can record the switching onto a MIDI track in Cubase. It will switch between those different loops and just press the D sharp if you ever want the pattern to stop running. And that's it. So that's how I can work with Dr. Rex still within Cubase. And the other things that are gonna be affected by this, well, the vocoder is one I can't figure out how to get working. So I'd love somebody to prove me wrong with that, but I don't think we're gonna be able to send audio into the vocoder as yet. And other things that are gonna be affected are things like the, the pattern sequencer, the matrix pattern sequencer. I love the matrix pattern sequencer. I used to write songs and then come up with these little patterns and then copy the patterns to track and stuff like that. And right now all I can figure out how to do is choose different patterns, but they just would run throughout the whole song. So I have not figured out a way to send MIDI information to a matrix pattern sequencer to choose between the different patterns. So I'm not sure if that's just me. I couldn't find anything in the manual. And uh, I'd love to be proven wrong because the matrix is kind of fun. It's a neat little way to create music. Other things that are going to be similarly affected would be things like the players. Scales and chords is kind of neat. Let's go to a Thor and then go to a player. We'll go to scales and chords. You can see that I can still use the scales and chords to do things like chords. Turn it off. Turn it back on. So the chords thing still works, the scales still work. There is no two track button and there is no way to take the chords themselves and send that MIDI information onto a track in Cubase. What you're gonna record in Cubase is just a monophonic track of the single notes that you're playing, and then it, it will run through the scales and chords in real time. So it'll still work in that sense, but it doesn't allow you to put the MIDI information onto a track and then manipulate that further kind of as a starting point. So there's other players. These are all gonna be affected similarly. You'll still be able to use the note delay and have things transform in real time as it runs through it, which is kind of cool. So there's still lots of stuff that you can use. It's just not quite to the extent that you can use it within Reason. So those are the main sort of pros and cons of using Reason as a rack plugin. And as you can see, it's going to be quite powerful. It's going to make people like me who use Reason for a long time happy because we can now get those instruments that we fell in love with way back in the day. We can use them now alongside all of our other favorite virtual instruments in the DAW of our choice. And I think that's the big thing. The way I see it is Reason is now opened up to a huge user base and hopefully that means more resources to put towards their software in the future. So if you're new to my videos, you'll see that I do all sorts of different stuff. I do mostly music production, but I also get into video production and photography. And I will be doing more in the future on other programs and other pieces of hardware. So hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.